Hi everyone, welcome to Pristine AI. This is the second part of the NiFi Kafka integration video. In the first part of the video, we have seen how we can use NiFi to produce the data to the Kafka topic. We saw two different processors. One was published Kafka processor and the second one was the published Kafka record processor. In the first part of the flow, we were able to generate the random records using the generate flow file processor and we are able to publish that those records into the Kafka topic. Whereas in the second video, we read a file from a location, we validated those files and the valid records were sent to the Kafka topic, uh, which is created for the valid records. Similarly, invalid records were sent to the invalid record topic. To know more about publish to Kafka flow, please go ahead and watch the first video. I have added a link in the description. Now let's go ahead and see how we can use NiFi to consume the messages from the Kafka topic. So there are two flows inside. First one is using the consume Kafka processor and the second one is using the consume Kafka record processor. Now let's go ahead with the first flow. We are going to use the consume Kafka processor to read the message that were published by the published Kafka processor. The message that was published looks like this. So this is our JSON array which has one JSON object available inside it. This JSON object has multiple fields like name, address, details. We are going to read this message using the consume Kafka processor. Then we are going to play around with this particular JSON and extract some fields around it. Let's go and see what all properties are required by the consume Kafka processor. So we can see that there is a property called Kafka broker that is required, security protocol, SASL mechanism, topic name from which we want to consume the messages, the group ID and the offset. We have set the offset to earliest, which means that all the message that is available in the Kafka topic, we are going to read all those messages. If you want to read the latest message, we can set the offset reset to latest. Let me start this processor. We can see that consume Kafka generated 14 flow files. Let's go ahead and see the content of these flow files over here. We can see that the message that has been published by the published Kafka processor is now available in this particular flow. Now let's go ahead and consume this message in the split JSON processor. The purpose of the split JSON processor is to split the JSON array into multiple JSON elements. So it requires a JSON path expression. We have currently set it to dollar dot asterisk, which means that all the element inside this particular JSON array should be splitted and each JSON object will be treated as a separate flow file. We can see that there is only one object available inside this JSON array. So this particular split JSON processor should split the JSON array and create one flow file out of it. Similarly, there are 14 flow files. So we would be expecting 14 flow file as an output in the split relationship. Let me start this processor. And now we can see that there's 14 flow file available in the split relationship. If I go and see the content of this flow file, we will see that now we have the JSON object and we don't have the array over here. Now, once the data is splitted using the split JSON processor, we can use another set of processor for JSON data processing. So this particular processor is called as evaluate JSON path. This particular processor is used to evaluate the JSON path and extract the elements out of it. And those elements can be set into the flow file attributes or can be used as a flow file content. As a description over here, we can see that it evaluates one or more JSON path expression against the content of flow file. The result of those expressions are assigned to a flow file attributes, or it can also be written in the content of the flow file. So let's go inside this processor. I have uh, set the destination to the flow file attributes, which means that all the JSON path evaluated by this particular processor will create a new attribute in the flow file. We can see over here that I have created two different properties. The first one is the details. We are going to read the JSON object from here 
and there is a detail object which we are going to extract we can see that the json path expression is dollar dot details dot position so i want to extract the position element from this particular json object so there is another property that we have set that is the name to get the name we are going to use dollar dot name we can see over here that this particular object has a key named name now once we start this processor we expect that the flow file will now contain a new attribute there would be a name attribute as well as a detail attribute we can see that the detail is the data flow engineer which is extracted by the evaluate json path also we can see that there is a name john doe available so this is how we can use the json path expression we can see that evaluate json path expression is now connected to two different flows we have used the match relationship which means that all the flow file which has this particular json path should go under the match relationship now we can see that there are two different flows the first flow is the using the flattened json and the second flow is again using the split json the purpose of this particular flow is to make you aware about different processes that can be used to play around with the json data so let's go ahead with the flattened json processor the flattened json processor provides the user with the ability to take a nested json document and flatten it into a single key value pair we can see that address field is a json array inside which there are two json objects for different addresses there is address type work as well as address type home in the description again it is a json object which has the detail of the address now if you are going to use the flattened json processor now with the flattened json processor we would be able to flatten this json now let's go inside the flattened json processor and see what all properties are required we can see there is one property called as separator this property can be used to combine different keys so for example if we have a description and a description has a key called number then a new key will be created description underscore number similarly a key called as description underscore city can be created so let's start this processor and see how it looks like once the json is flattened we can go to list queue and see one of the flow file and see how the content look like now once you view the content of the flow file i'll copy this i'll paste it over here and see how it looks like we can see that the description object is now flattened now it is description underscore number description underscore street similarly for city state and zip so this is how we can use the flatten json processor to flatten the json elements uh, finally once all the processing is done we can either uh, send this particular uh, messages to another kafka topic into a cloud storage or into a file for now let's uh, add a log attribute processor which is just going to log the attributes available since we don't want to store the data in any location there is another flow where we are going to again use the split json processor and we are going to extract the address field out of it we can see that the address field is an array so now after the split json is uh, applied we are going to have two different flow files for each particular object available so let me start this processor and we will see that we have 28 flow files now as an output so the input was 14 flow files and each flow file has this particular json array which is now split it into two if i am going to see the content of the flow file i will be able to see the addresses we can see that only the address uh, object is now available as a content of the flow file so instead of complete json we are now only having the address field now this address field once we have received we can again use our json path evaluate json path processor and if we want to write only the description of the address we can use the json path expression and you can see that i have 
added the destination as flow file content. Earlier, the destination was a flow file attribute. So the messages were added as an attribute. In this case, we are going to replace the content of the flow file with the description. So if I start this processor, I will see that we have the description available in the content of the flow file. You can see that only the address uh, description, which is number, street, city, etc., is now available in the uh, flow file content. Finally, if I want to write this result into some file or some database, we can add appropriate processes over here. For now, since we do not want to write to any uh, destination, we are going to uh, just log the attributes and go ahead with it. So this is how we can use the consume Kafka processor and multiple JSON related processor to process the data in NiFi. Now let's go ahead with the second part of the flow. In this part of the flow, we are going to consume the messages that were created by the published Kafka record processor over here. So we can see that we have published the message into two topics, one for valid record and one for invalid record. So we are going to use the second flow to consume those messages. If we go and see the data that we have published, we can see that we can see that there are any value available in the double column. So this column is the BMI column. And since it is a double kind of a column, we don't expect any string element. So all the elements which has this particular uh, record with the uh, invalid schema are going to the invalid topics. So in the consume Kafka record, we have two flows. The invalid flow is going to only deal with the invalid records. You can see that there is a warning sign available in both the processor, which says that the record writer validated against this particular controller service is invalid because the controller service currently disabled. Let's go and enable those controller services, which is disabled. So we can see that there is a valid CSV record writer. We are going to enable this and we will see that the error went. Similarly, there is one more invalid JSON tree reader which is uh, currently uh, disabled, we are going to enable this. Once uh, this is enabled, we will see that the error is now gone. So let's go ahead and see the properties that are required by the consume Kafka record processor. We can see that uh, the common properties like Kafka broker, topic name, record reader and writer, group ID and offset. These are required. We have set the offset to earliest because we want to read the messages that is available in the Kafka topic from the beginning. So let me start this processor. Once we have started the consume Kafka record processor, we can see that the output is two flow files and this output is now available to be consumed by the merge record processor. Similarly, if I start the consume Kafka for invalid record, we can see that we have a read one flow file from the consume Kafka record processor. So this particular uh, flow file would be containing all the invalid records and the flow file in this particular location would be containing all the valid records that has been uh, received from the valid record topic. We can see that there is a funnel in between. This funnel is used to combine multiple flows. So if you see over here, the consume valid record flow and the consume invalid record flow is now getting combined using this funnel. So to create a new funnel, you can just click on here and drag it. It will create a funnel. Now before uh, moving the invalid record via this funnel to the merge record, we first want to fix the invalid records that is available. So as I mentioned, that we have NA values available in the BMI column. So there is a processor called as update record processor. This processor is used to update any values inside the flow file. If you go and see the usage, you can see that it updates the content of the flow file that contains record oriented data, which means that it is either a CSV data that is available in the flow file or the JSON data. It is going to update the content based on the uh, values that we have defined. So to use this processor, you can add a new property from here. 
you can give the path of the uh, data. So I wanted to update the BMI values. And uh, over here, you can see that I've given the value as 23.9. There are different replacement value strategy available. So currently I am using the uh, literal value. Once I start this processor, we will see that all the NA values has now been replaced with the 23.9. Now let me open this queue and see whether the value has been updated in the invalid records. So we can see that the value NA is now replaced with 23.9. So all the values is now 23.9 for BMI wherever it was NA. Once that is done, we are going to use the merge record processor. Now we, we can use the merge record processor to merge the flow files. If we go and see the usage of the merge record processor, it says that it merges together multiple record oriented flow file into a single flow file, which contains all the record of the input flow file. So if I go inside this particular processor, we can see there are few properties required like record reader, record writer, merge strategy where we can set the algorithm that we are going to use for merging the record which is currently set to the bin packing algorithm we also have a few properties like what is the minimum number of record that you want in one file and what is the maximum number of record that you want in one file so i have a set minimum number of records to 4000 and maximum number of record though it is uh, not a mandatory property but still i have set it to 12000 so there are three flow files in the uh, queue. Once we start the merge record processor, these flow file will be merged and we'll get one flow file as an output. If I go and see the content of the flow file, I can go here and in the attribute, we'll see that it says that the merge count is three and the record count is 5100. So all the 5100 records that were available in three files is now merged into one file. And if I go and look into the uh, content of the flow file, it looks something like this. So all the data that was available across three flow files is now combined into one flow file. Once that is done, the final output can be stored in some location. It may be a GCS bucket or it may again move to some another Kafka topic using published Kafka record processor. For now, we are just going to log the attributes and drop this flow file from the flow. So this is how we can use NiFi to consume the message from the Kafka topic as well as publish the message to the Kafka topic. This is all for our NiFi Kafka integration video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe.